As the 18-year-old girl stood at the threshold of the convent, she knew that her decision would change her life forever. Having been raised by nuns in an orphanage since the tender age of 12, she was faced with the ultimate choice, follow in their footsteps or step into the unknown. And so, with a sense of trepidation and determination, the girl made the fateful decision to leave the safety of the convent and forge her path in the world. Little did anyone know that this girl would become the legendary Coco Chanel, the most celebrated fashion designer of the 20th century. But behind the glamour and glitz of Chanel's success lies a dark and mysterious past. While the world knew her as a style icon and a trailblazer, few knew the shocking truth behind her rise to fame. From her murky ties to the Nazis, to her ruthless business tactics, Chanel took many secrets to her grave. And now the hidden truth of her incredible journey is finally coming to light. So buckle up and prepare to discover the untold story of Coco Chanel, a woman whose life was every bit as intriguing as the fashion empire she created. The rags to riches story of Coco Chanel is rooted in a childhood marked by hardship and tragedy. Born in 1883 in a poor house in Saumar, Western France, to parents who were not legally married, her early years were fraught with struggle. Her mother, Eugenie, gave birth to her at a charity hospital at the tender age of 20, with her father, Albert, nowhere to be found. Coco's mother, Eugenie, faced many challenges as she worked tirelessly to provide for her family. Despite the odds stacked against her, she never gave up, putting her family's needs above her own. However, the constant battle with poverty and poor living conditions took its toll on Eugenie's health, and in 1894 she tragically succumbed to bronchitis and asthma. With no means to care for their children, Coco and her sisters were sent to the austere confines of an orphanage managed by nuns, where they lived a strict and regimented life while Coco's brothers were taken in by another family. For Coco, life in the orphanage was a lonely and gruelling existence, where she spent years living under the strict regime of the nuns. But it was here that she honed her skills and developed a love for fashion, a passion that would later propel her to global stardom. Finally leaving the orphanage at 18, Coco Chanel revolutionized the fashion industry, carving out a legacy that persists. Coco Chanel's enigmatic persona extended to her personal life, mainly regarding her family. Despite achieving international fame as a fashion icon, she remained elusive and guarded about her upbringing. In interviews, she would often invent stories and mislead reporters about her childhood, refusing to acknowledge that she had grown up in an orphanage. Instead, she would claim that she had been raised by her aunts, though she would also reveal that they were absolutely without tenderness and that she had not felt loved in their home. In fact, as a child, she had spun tales to her peers at the orphanage about her father being away in America, seeking his fortune and promising to return to her. But he had left her at the orphanage and never looked back, a fact she concealed from those around her. As an adult, she continued to blur the lines between fact and fiction, often insisting that her family had a grand home with separate rooms for each member. In truth, they had lived in a single room, spending their nights and days in close quarters. Through it all, Coco remained fiercely private about her challenging beginnings, revealing little to the public and guarding her secrets until the end. Life in the orphanage was a monotonous routine of classes, sewing and prayer, as reported by Time. Coco Chanel was no exception to this schedule, but while she found it tedious, she also discovered her passion for sewing and designing. Watching the nuns and other girls sew simple linens, Coco was fascinated by the artistry of patterns and designs. Her interest in the craft grew when she stumbled upon books, like Two Little Vagrants, tales of people who had triumphed over poverty and hardship to achieve great success. Fueled by her imagination and inspired by the books, Coco once asked a seamstress to create a dress that resembled the one described in the story. The resulting garment was a breathtaking confection of ruffles, a high neck with flying ribbons, and a matching slip in purple. She was only 15 or 16 when she wore it to church, but her aunts were scandalized 
by her boldness, forcing her to change into something more modest. Nevertheless, the incident marked the beginning of Coco's lifelong obsession with fashion and her daring vision for what women could wear. Behind the glamour and success of Coco Chanel lay a dark side that many chose to ignore. She was an unbashed critic of homosexuality and was not afraid to express her disdain for it. Furthermore, her dislike for Jews was no secret, and she made no effort to hide it. According to the New York Times, in his book Sleeping with the Enemy, author and journalist Howell Vaughan details Chanel's attraction to British high society, including the Duke of Westminster, Hugh Richard Arthur, and Bendel, who was openly anti-Semitic. While working with Chanel in Hollywood, Samuel Goldwyn was aware of her views and attempted to keep Jews away from her. Despite Chanel's company, Chanel refuting the allegations and claiming that she had Jewish friends and financial links with the Rothschild family, records indicate that she was indeed homophobic and anti-Semitic. Her beliefs remain a stain on her legacy. Although she was never punished for her actions during World War II, it is widely believed that Coco Chanel aligned herself with the Nazi regime. According to a New Yorker article that examined her role in the war through the lens of author Howell Vaughan, Chanel was romantically involved with Hans Gunther von Dinklage, a high-ranking Nazi officer. The most compelling aspects of Vaughan's book Sleeping with the Enemy was his claim that Chanel not only held anti-Semitic views, but was also a covert spy during the war, actively working to advance the Nazi cause. Vaughan's research drew on records from various countries including Germany, France, the United States, and the United Kingdom. He discovered that both Chanel and Dinklage participated in missions across Europe to recruit agents for the Third Reich. Chanel even had a secret code name for her missions, Westminster. When asked why more attention hadn't been paid to Chanel's involvement in the war, Vaughan responded in the New Yorker interview, I am clueless. I cannot solve the problem. People either opted not to deal with it or didn't want to know. Naturally, the Wertheimers, one of the wealthiest families in the world, will not be amused by this tale. Beyond that, I'm at a loss as to why not. Coco Chanel suspended operations at her shops during the war and left for Switzerland to keep a low profile after being questioned about her alleged German connections. She was never charged with any wrongdoing, but her absence from the fashion industry was noticeable. However, she returned to the spotlight at age 70, and despite a rough start with failed shows, she persevered. The Wertheimer family, who had bought a significant share in her company in the 1920s and continued to manage the Chanel brand supported her financially during her comeback. By 1954, the family had complete control of the empire, and Chanel had secured her financial stability. According to Hal Vaughan, in addition to the Wertheimer money, French society was ready to move past the collaboration allegations. Chanel's talent significantly influenced her triumphant return to the fashion world. According to The Guardian, Coco Chanel lived in seclusion at the Hotel Ritz in Paris in her later years. Although admirers once surrounded her, her life was not as glamorous as it seemed. On January 10th, 1971, after returning from a walk with a friend, she said to her maid in her last words, you see, this is how you die, as she lay down on her bed. Despite her achievements, Coco Chanel's views and actions during her life are indefensible by today's standards. Her vocal homophobia and anti-Semitism, as well as her collaboration with the Nazis during World War II, are well documented. Unfortunately, her legacy is that of a talented fashion designer whose products remain popular to this day, rather than that of a Nazi sympathizer who evaded justice. It remains to be seen if future generations will reassess their judgments of Chanel. Be sure to catch our next video featuring more authentic success stories from top brands, the truth about Netflix's disastrous downfall.